basically almost 9 amps, roughly, back into the batteries. <clears throat> I think I'm going to have to drain about 300 watts off of here. And you can see this drop down. And basically what it is is it's three bulbs driving off this inverter right here, which is tied to the batteries. So basically that allows me to get a little more speed because the batteries are pretty much charged right now. So let's take this up. You can see that hit zero, and I'm dumping 29 amps into the batteries. Now there's eight batteries, so that's up to 30. And now we're at 151 and four amps. We've grown four amps at 100, and it's really 120, but it's pulsing the input. So, and this is about to head here, so you can see what happens here. See, not quite as dramatic as it was. So, basically holding right around 55 to 60 volts. It's now making 55 to 60 volts AC power. It's running off of the pulse motor. Back that down a little bit there. And it's pulling 4 amps, a little over 4 amps. It's 120 volts in, but it actually pulses the input. So the caps give you a little false reading there. It's 158 volts. You can't get 158 volts from a house current, so being bridge rectified underneath the, the Variac into the cat box. So basically, right now, it's making a con and it's generating basically 50 to 60 volts AC induction generator. And it's being driven by a pulse motor. So there is some legitimate way to use a pulse motor to drive an induction generator. This is only my second attempt. So as you can see, it's working. It's driving it. It's maintaining right around 55 volts, let's say. Right? It's dumping 33 amps into the battery. 33 amps into the batteries. The batteries are climbing 13.26 volts into eight batteries. I'm bleeding off 300 watts right now. So that's the status of where we're at right now. So it is running. It's only running 673 RPMs because I'm backfeeding current back into the head end of the induction generator. I'm about to make some other changes which should make that smoother. But basically, at 673 RPM, I'm making 56 volts. I'm using 157 volts pulse at 4 amps to do that. But I'm only drawing 120 off the house current. The caps are pulsing on the input because as it pulses, it adds a little extra pump to the capacitor. So, that's kind of where we're at. Let's get a look at the front of it here. It's now at 35 amps into the batteries. I wanted to 
give you guys a look at where exactly the cart motor was. This is the second variation of the cart motor. I'm about to make changes to the resistance so I can drop the number down and hopefully sustain it at around 50 or 60 volts to drive the wheel from the induction generator. I'm also planning on adding right here a small little generator set of coils to feed back into the head end of the induction generator, which should improve its performance slightly. So basically, run through the numbers one more time here. Maintaining 55 volts coming from the induction generator, which is being fed into this cat box. And at 672 RPM, the motor is being driven by 155 volts. It's up to 5, 5 amps, roughly. I'm recapturing 37 amps. Now, I've got to be careful here. I've got two 20 amp breakers on the batteries. That's pushing a little close. If I dump 40 amps into the batteries, I could trip them breakers and really cause some damage. So, we're going to back this off a little bit for now. Don't want to do that. Don't want to trip both them breakers simultaneously and have nowhere for that 30 amps to go. That would be really bad. So, turn it down. So, we're still maintaining the 50 volts at 135 volts at 5 amps. So, 671 RPM. So, so, most of this is because I have to bleed off the energy. So, even though this is reading 32 amps, uh, that's only reading a little under 10, is because most of the energy is being taken over by these bulbs over here. So, the batteries are fully charged, and the charge is not a flux charge. It's a real charge. It works perfectly. The charge maintains the charge. So, so that's kind of where we're at right now. So, give you a little look at what's going on. The cart motor is our best attempt. It looks like the way it's going to work. You know, all these other designs over the past few years have been leading to this design. So where we're at right now is this cart motor is roughly four and a half feet tall by three and a half feet wide with a wheel that's 26 inches across, 25 inches, 26 inches across with 22 magnets. The wheel weighs 30 pounds, being driven by nine pulse coils, but all pulse sequentially to drive that wheel to pulse and drive this induction generator, which is maintaining 50 volts at, at this current state. So that's basically it. This is Technomancer for Zero Point Fuel, signing out. Look for more videos. Check out ZeroPointFuel.com. Got a lot going on. We're almost there. Hang in there with us, and we'll see where this goes. Thank you.